Hello and hello everyone welcome to class 12 biology in our previous videos we have been discussing about the applications of biotechnology in agriculture and in medicine right in this particular video we are going to discuss about the final portion of our chapter that is on transgenic animals and ethical issues right so in this video we will discuss about what are transgenic animals and what are their uses and then we will talk about the ethical issues concerning biotechnology Right. What are the ethical issues related to the creation of genetically modified organisms by the scientist? Right. Uh, so uh, these two topics we will discuss in this particular video. So let us first discuss about transgenic animals. Right. So what are transgenic animals? So what is a transgenic animal? A transgenic animal is an animal that expresses a foreign gene. Right. So what scientists have done is scientists they have inserted a gene within the animal by right, thereby making that animal a genetically modified organism and inside that animal the foreign gene will express itself okay. so a transgenic animal is an animal that expresses a foreign gene within itself another definition of a transgenic animal is an animal whose genome has been altered by the transfer of a gene or multiple genes from another species or another breed right so there are different kinds of transgenic animals created by scientists in the laboratories right there are transgenic rats rabbits pigs sheep cows and fishes but 95% of the transgenic animals are said to be mice. I don't know the reason behind why a majority of the transgenic animals created within laboratories are mice. Maybe they are easier to be maintained within the laboratories. Maybe there are less uh, legal issues or ethical issues concerning the genetic manipulation of mice as compared to other animals. Right? So uh, that is about the transgenic animals. So, but why do we create transgenic animals? Why does a scientist create uh, transgenic animals within his laboratory? So let us now talk about the uses of transgenic animals or the reasons behind creation of transgenic animals within the laboratories. So when we talk about the uses of transgenic animals, these transgenic animals, they are useful in the study of how genes are regulated and how those genes, they affect the normal body functions and its development. So transgenic animals, they are useful in the study of normal physiology and body's development. Right. For example, if you want to study the effect of certain growth factors such as insulin-like growth factor in the growth process, what you can do is you can create a transgenic animal in which the gene responsible for the synthesis of insulin-like growth factor can be altered and then you can observe or you can study the effect of uh, such alteration within the animal's growth process. Right. So uh, such study will help us in pinpointing the role of such growth factors, insulin-like growth factors. Right. Otherwise, we won't be able to tell what is the role of insulin-like growth factor in the growth process. What we can do is we can delete or we can alter that particular gene within the transgenic animal and we can see the effects of uh, such genetic alterations. So, transgenic animals, they are useful in the study of normal physiology and development. The second use of transgenic animals is in the study of human diseases. Right. If you want to study the relationship between certain genes and their role in the development of diseases, you can use transgenic animals as models for the study of those diseases. Right. So there are many transgenic animals available as models for the study of human diseases such as cancer, cystic fibrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, Alzheimer's, etc. These diseases, they are suspected to be caused due to mutations in certain human genes. Right. Now, if you want to study the role of such genes in causing these diseases, you can create transgenic animals in which you can insert these mutated genes and then you can study, right, study the development of these diseases and then you can uh, come up with or you can create new treatment plans or you can, tre you can create new treatment procedures for those human diseases. So, the second use of transgenic animals is in the study of human diseases or human genetic diseases. The third use of transgenic animals is for obtaining biological products. So transgenic animals can be used to produce biological products such as medicines, enzymes, hormones for the treatment of human diseases. We have already talked about genetically engineered insulin produced by genetically modified organisms such as E. coli. But E. coli is a bacteria, it's not an animal. So we have got biological products which can be obtained from transgenic animals such as alpha-1 antitrypsin. Alpha-1 antitrypsin can be obtained from transgenic animals and it can be used to treat emphysema. Emphysema is a pulmonary disease. Right? In that particular disease, the alveoli or the air sacs of the lungs, they get damaged. Right? So alpha-1 antitrypsin which is obtained from transgenic animals can be used to treat emphysema disease. And then we also have got transgenic cow. 
Right. In 1997, the first transgenic cow was created. Her name was Rosie, and she produced human protein enriched milk. Right. The milk of Rosie contained human protein alpha lactalbumin. So alpha lactalbumin is a human protein, and Rosie was producing that in her milk. Right. So such milk produced by transgenic cows, they are said to be nutritionally more balanced compared to uh, natural cow milk. Right. So uh, transgenic animals can be used for obtaining biological products such as these two examples given over here. The fourth use of transgenic animals is in testing vaccine safety. Let's say a scientist they ha he has created he or she has created a vaccine for a particular disease. He or she cannot directly test upon uh, human beings, human subjects. What the scientists have to do is they have to use it on uh, lab animals. To, te to test for the safety of that particular vaccine. So the scientists they can use transgenic mice as human models to test for the safety of vaccines. So such as a polio vaccine, polio vaccine safety was carried out on transgenic mice. Right. So these transgenic mice they can replace the use of monkeys. Right. Uh, in certain laboratories they use monkeys such as uh, normal rhesus monkeys, uh, chimpanzees, gorillas for scientific testing. But in such cases, uh, ethical issues from the animal rights groups, they come up, right? They, they, they cause legal issues, right? Now, uh, tr if you use transgenic mice, it causes less legal issues compared to the use of monkeys in vaccine safety testing, right? So transgenic mice can use, uh, can replace the use of monkeys in vaccine safety testing. And then we have got the fifth use of transgenic animals that is in chemical safety testing. It is also called as toxicity test testing if you want to check for the toxic effect of a particular chemical you can use transgenic animals right you can create transgenic animals that are more sensitive to those toxic substances and after exposure to those toxic substances you can study the effects of the toxic uh, toxic substance on the biological cells and tissues right so these are some of the uses of transgenic animals so before we start our discussions on the ethical issues of biotechnology, I want you to search for information on the use of transgenic mosquitoes in controlling diseases such as malaria, dengue, chikungunya and Zika virus. Right. I want you to uh, Google for some information on the use of transgenic mosquitoes, how we can use transgenic mos mosquitoes in controlling these human diseases. Let us now discuss about the ethical issues of biotechnology. Right? I told you in biotechnology, scientists they can create genetically modified organisms for the welfare of human beings. But that doesn't mean that scientists they can create any kind of genetically modified organism they want. Right? It has to be under rules and regulations. The scientists they have to seek permission in order to create genetically modified organisms. Right? Why? Because these genetically modified organisms, if they are released into the ecosystem they can have unpredictable results to the ecosystem some of them they can be quite harmful for the ecosystem right because they are genetically modified we don't know what kind of effect it may have upon the ecosystem okay so uh, genetic engineering and creation of genetically modified organisms is regulated by organizations for example in india we have organizations such as geac which stands for Genetic Engineering Approval Committee, which is set, by, set up by the Indian government. Right. The role of such organization is to check for validity of GM research and also to check for the safety of introducing genetically modified organisms for the public service. So these organizations, they will control or they will regulate the activities of the scientists and they will check for the validity of the research of the scientists they will also check for the safety of the result or the product product such as genetically modified organisms of the scientists for public service another ethical issue in biotechnology is that genetically modified organisms can be patented right so what is a patent i have copied this definition of patent from wikipedia it says a patent is a form of intellectual property a patent gives its owner the right to exclude others from making using selling and importing an invention for a limited period of time in other words if a scientist creates a genetically modified organism and if he gets patent for that he owns that genetically modified organism no one else can use that genetically modified organism without his permission right now this has caused some ethical issues 
right? For example, there has been public anger over patents for genetically modified organisms and their genetic materials, which have already been known from long back by farmers and indigenous people. So some scientists and some companies, right, what they, they do is they apply for patents for genetically modified organisms and genetic materials, right, which have already been known from long back by farmers and indigenous people. And this is causing public anger, right? So this is just being lazy, right? The scientists, they are being lazy. They are just applying for uh, financial benefits. They are just trying to own something which does not belong to them, right? For ex one example is given in your textbook, right? The basmati rice patent issue. You all must have eaten basmati rice, right? So in 1997, a US company called Rice Tag, what they did was they got patents, right? They got patent rights on basmati rice through US patent and trademark office. But basmati rice was developed by Indian farmers over hundreds of years. Rice Tag, they has just crossed Indian basmati with semi drop varieties and then they just claimed it to be a novelty and got patent rights on basmati rice. Now, this would have led to restrictions on other peoples and other nations selling basmati rice. What Indian government did was they filed a case against this particular patent by Rice Tag and Indian government, they won. Right. Rice Tag, they have to let go of their patent rights on basmati rice. And similar cases of patent atoms of medicinal properties of turmeric and neem were made. Right. And turmeric and neem, they have been used as medicine right, uh, they, for their medicinal properties way back in Ayurvedic uh, field, right? So, so such cases arise, right? So that is an ethical issue. And it is also an issue of biopiracy. You all know what is piracy. Piracy means unauthorized use of resources. And biopiracy means use of bio resources by multinational companies like Rice Tech and other organizations without proper authorization from countries and people concerned without compensatory payment. Right. So the traditional knowledge of bioresources possessed by developing and underdeveloped nations like India, they are being exploited by rich industrialized nations. Right. And therefore, some nations, they are developing laws to prevent such unauthorized exploitation. For example, Indian Parliament, they have recently cleared the second amendment of the Indian Patents Bill, which addresses patent terms, biopiracy and research and development initiative. So what's, what Rice Tech Company have, has done is they have committed biopiracy, right? They have tried to use basmati rice, right? Without getting proper authorization from uh, India and their, uh, its farmers, right? So that is a form of biopiracy, right? So the traditional knowledge possessed by people of developing and underdeveloped nations, they are being exploited by rich industrialized nations. Right? That is a biopiracy. Okay, so with that, we have come to the end of this particular chapter. We will now start the next unit that is ecology, right? And we will start the next chapter on ecology that is organisms and populations from next video onwards. Okay, thank you.